Hey guys, welcome back to Mechanical PE Exam Prep. If you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to get the basics down before solving lots of problems, take my Udemy course, HVAC and Refrigeration Fundamentals. In less than five hours, you'll review all the major topics you need for the PE exam. By the end, you'll actually be excited to start studying. Okay, so now we know the airflow that we need. The next question is, what is the humidity ratio of the air supplied to the disco? So we have this 11,000 CFM of supply air. Now they want to know what's the humidity ratio of that supply air. Well, it has to be dry enough to make up for this latent load that's in the space. However much moisture is being produced inside the room, some of that is going to be exhausted, some of it's going to be recirculated and conditioned. Ultimately, any moisture that's added to the space needs to be removed so that it could be a net effect of remaining constant, which is how it's keeping a relative humidity of 50% at that temperature. So it had better have a humidity ratio that's lower than what's in the room. And we have a way to calculate that, but before we get to that, we're definitely going to need to know as part of it, what is the total latent load in the room? Well, it's the sum of the latent load of people, which we found here, and any other latent loads which they've given us this food prep moisture, but that's not in BTUs per hour, they've given it to us in grains per hour, so we actually know a mass flow rate of moisture that's being added to the air. We'll need to be able to go back and forth between a mass flow rate of water being added to air and the amount of energy that that water contains, so we'll show that as well. For now our goal is to find the sum in terms of energy so we can state the total latent load, so let's do that. So Q dot latent is the latent contribution from people, which is the 78,000 BTUs per hour that we calculated in the last part, plus the food prep moisture. But the food prep moisture has been given to us in grains per hour. So how do we change that to energy units? Grains, and grains is grains of H2O, grains of water vapor. So there's a couple things we can do. The first thing we can do is divide that by 7,000 because there are 7,000 grains of moisture in one pound of water. So we'll say pounds of H2O. And that will get rid of grains. So now we have pounds of water per hour, but how much energy is in a pound of water? Well, that depends on the enthalpy that has to be added in order to change phase, or the energy that's given up when water vapor condenses. It's the same amount of energy that has to go in to evaporate water as comes out of water when it condenses. And we call that the latent heat of vaporization. So rather than just give you the number, let's actually write down the principle of what we're using here. This is a this part of the equation we're using the idea that Q dot equals M dot delta H, generally speaking. And in this case, the delta H is the amount of energy required to evaporate water at some temperature. So this number is actually H sub Fg, the latent heat of vaporization, at, and we'll assume T equals 60 degrees F, which is the temperature of the supply air. So you can go into the steam table that's organized by temperature and go to T equals 60 degrees F and look for H sub Fg and grab that number. That turns out to be 1059.3. BTU per pound, and obviously that's pounds of water. So hopefully that makes sense. This term taken together is finding the energy that's associated with this many grains of water per hour. So we can cancel pounds with pounds, and we should end up with BTUs per hour, which we do. So let's do that term by itself just to figure out how much its contribution is to the total. That's 6,810 BTUs per hour. So we'll add that to the 78,000, and we get a total latent load in the room of 84,810. So the food prep turned out to be not a huge contribution to the total latent load. Most of the latent load came from the people dancing and some of the people sitting. But there was this 6,800 BTU per hour from that food prep equipment, so we included it. And that's the total latent load. And we're not required to calculate it, but I think it's interesting and it doesn't take a long time. It's worth just showing the sensible heat ratio. So out of curiosity for this establishment, what's the ratio of the sensible heat load to the total heat load? We have the 203,600 from the previous 
step divided by the sum of that and this 84,810, which gives us a sensible heat ratio of 0 0.706, so about 70%, which is low. That means there's a decent amount of latent load, but that's to be expected for this kind of application. And typically, HVAC equipment is designed to accommodate a sensible heat ratio as low as 70%. Any lower than that, you may need to do something a little more interesting to address it, but this is something that uh, is not unusual. But getting back to their question, which is, what is the humidity ratio of the air supplied? So now we want to use this formula. The mass of water vapor that needs to be removed is equal to the mass of air that's being supplied times the difference in the humidity ratio. So in this case, that's the humidity ratio in the room minus the humidity ratio of the supplier. So the humidity ratio in the room we can easily look up from the site chart because we know the temperature and humidity in the room. We don't know the humidity ratio of the supply air. That's what we're looking to find out. We know the mass flow rate of air because we just calculated the volume flow rate in part A. So we can easily turn that into a mass flow rate just by using the density or the specific volume. And we know the total latent load. We don't actually know the mass flow rate of water, but we know the total latent load in BTUs per hour. So by the same principle as what we used before to figure out how many BTUs per hour were associated with those grains of moisture that were being added per unit time, we can go back in the other direction quite easily and say, okay, we have this much latent load. What's the mass of water that's being created in the space that's associated with that latent load? And we can plug that in here. So we have a bit of work to do here, but it's quite doable. What's going to go into this spot should have units of either pounds of water per unit time or grains per unit time. So I'm going to do it in grains per hour, which means that these numbers for humidity ratio should come out in grains per pound. So let's find out this m dot. We'll use the total latent load, this q dot l that we found right up here, and say that that equals m delta h again, just as we did before, m dot delta h, where h is the latent heat of vaporization. So we'll just write h sub fg. So we can rearrange this for that mass flow rate. This is m sub w, so I'll include that there. So m dot of water equals the total latent load, q sub l, divided by the latent heat of vaporization. And we'll make the same assumption that it's air at 60 degrees, so hfg is going to be the same value as it was before. So let's plug into here 84,810 BTU per hour divided by 1059 0.3 BTU per pound, and that equals 80.1 pounds per hour. That's pounds of water per hour. Now let's do a couple of things with that number. I actually had said pounds per hour before, but let's do this in pounds per minute. Since we have the mass flow rate of air in CFM, it's already per minute, so we'll just do everything per minute. So to change this, we'll say 80 pounds per hour times one hour is 60 minutes, and also times 7,000 grains for one pound. And if we do that math, we get 9,345 grains of water per minute. Sounds like a lot, but it's just a little over a pound of water a minute. So that's our value for m dot w. Let's substitute into this equation. So 9,345 grains per minute equals the mass flow rate of air which is 11,090 cubic feet per minute. I'll write it this way, since we want to see the units cancel. And now we want to change that into pounds of dry air per minute. So we'll divide by the specific volume. And I'm just using this as a typical value, 13.5 cubic feet per pound of dry air. I didn't even bother to look at the psych chart. It's uh, just kind of a typical number. But you could probably be more precise here by looking up the exact room conditions. And then we're going to multiply that by the difference in the humidity ratios. The humidity ratio that is associated with a room that's 77 degrees dry bulb and 50% humidity from the psych chart is 69.4 grains per pound of dry air minus the humidity ratio of the air being supplied, which we don't know. That's what we want to know. And now we have an algebra problem. So we can divide this. We'll get rid of cubic feet. This will become pounds per minute 
and then we divide the 9345 by that, we end up with 11.38, and that now has units of grains per pound of dry air equals 69.4 grains per pound of dry air minus the humidity ratio of the supply air. And then we can rearrange and solve for the humidity of the supply air. 58 grains per pound of dry air. And just in case you were preferring to work on this problem in pounds of water instead of grains, it's simply multiplying or dividing by 7,000. But for your reference, it's 0 0.0083 pounds of water per pound of dry air. And that is answer B. And just a note in case you have the original text and you're comparing to the solution worked in the book, you might notice that my numbers for the humidity ratio are just a little bit lower. That's probably because the sensible and latent heat load that I calculate are a bit lower than what they do in the book. They assume that people dancing go for about 1,000 BTUs per hour total, and I assume 850. My number is based on the MERM, which is probably a bit more updated than what was available at the time of publication. In any case, we're only talking about a few percent difference, so close enough if it's 58 grains or 60 grains per pound.